It's time to duel. Oh, wait. Wrong series. Wrong show. It's just the name of the title. Hello everyone and welcome to the Anime Zillia. My name is James and together let's talk about Inspectra episode 10. So overall I thought this was a very good episode with some very good persuasive language techniques. But unfortunately I did find myself a little bit confused uh, towards the end. But that's just my personal uh, take on the episode. However we start off with Kotoko asking the question as to why did Nase appear? And this was a very good use of persuasive uh, techniques and persuasive language, as it immediately starts to get the reader slash audience to think, which is always good because asking them that question or a question when you're trying to persuade them of something always gets them to ask themselves that very thing. Um, and once they start thinking that, then the audience then allows themselves to be more open to new information and it creates a new window within the reader's mind allowing them to second guess slash develop their way of thinking once a new plausible um, and um, you know factual information is offered. Therefore I thought this whole asking question at the start was a very good technique which was much appreciated however this isn't the first time we've seen this kind of thing used from Kotoko in this series I just thought it was pretty cool, and I loved the way they opened up with it. So, this is where a storyteller version of Kotoko comes in, and honestly, this was a luxury to listen to, as we all know how nice it is to basically listen to Kotoko talking, as the VA for her character has done a brilliant job with said character, um, you know, over the course of these 10 episodes. However, the idea of using a crime story... Um, like situation to try and convince the believers of the still lady Nase that the reason why Nase returned was to clear her name as she is still suspected as one of the leading suspects to her father's death um, was it was interesting I really could get behind the narrative and I found it really fun and enjoyable now they explained the reason as to why she killed someone thus being the detective was because it was out of frustration. If you look at Nase's face, she can't really talk, she hasn't got a mouth, so how is she going to clear her name unless she does some writing with a pen and paper? Which, you know, it's a lie. We're told that everything that Kotoko is saying is a lie in order to convince um, the public that she's not real. But this, this aspect of the episode, for me, was really fun, enjoyable to watch, as I could really get behind the story and the narrative. The scenario was believable. And for the kind of reasoning behind it was the fact that her father was being jealous of Nase's fame. Nase being his daughter, obviously as a father. And setting a trap for his daughter to fall into and thus dying. As well as trying to frame her own daughter, uh, his own daughter fits the story narrative very well, and it is slightly plausible, hence giving us the narrative on Nase returning to clear her name, because there's this notebook that her father writes in, and it says that he is scared of um, uh, basically Nase killing him, and there's no reason to be, it's just him being a doofus I suppose. However, we do get to see Saki's reaction to all of this once the story is over. And it was pretty funny, especially when talking about the whole kind of talking in the afterlife situation. It's unrealistic. It's not plausible in any way, shape or form. But it's something they had to do because Kotoko needed a way to explain how Nase knew she had been framed by her own father. And I don't know, Saki hasn't really been used very much in these last few episodes except for a bit of comic relief. And honestly, I'm okay with that. I like Saki as a character, she's alright. She hasn't like wowed me much in this series, but we do need a little bit of lightheartedness from this very serious situation and dialogue heavy episodes. So Saki being here to do that, not too bad, pretty good. Now the second half of the episode is kind of where things get a little bit confusing for me. And it left me slightly scratching my head a little bit as we go into scenario 3. Scenario 2 seems to have worked quite well. And 
We're seeing the painting crack little by little after scenario 2 has been explained. So we know from that fact that A. Narse is getting weaker as an apparition. Um, thus Koro is managing to get slightly upper hand every now and again. So it's still this tug of war. However, they move into scenario 3 and it gets very risky. It's almost death-like note. That's the kind of vibe that I got with the whole complexity of the explanation um, that involved Narse's uh, sister. Now, this ultimately basically consisted of um, a friend or a fan um, of Narse's sister basically trying to look out for her and thus pretending to be the still lady Narse in order to calm down this very frightened sister as the script plays out to the point where um, a double is standing in for Narse killing herself or being dead so it's not actually Narse who was hit by the still beams it was someone completely different thus leading to um, Narse's sister being very kind of schizophrenic she's um, going slightly crazy because she thinks that it's her fault and her sister is coming to exact revenge on her because of the kind of the note her father left she basically handed it over to the media hence to how they found out and this obviously led to the current situation now again this is all a lie this isn't actually true however um, talking about this scenario it just doesn't make sense However, saying that, they do end up using this as a sort of cliffhanger as it shows um, Rika shooting it down while looking very menacing. Now, she shuts it down by using basically just logical thinking. And if this scene didn't occur at the end of this episode and we had to wait an entire week for the results of the third scenario, then it's very obvious that this could very easily be argued and uh, content creators like myself and any guys who are watching it or anybody that's watching it and basically come up with this same idea that Rika has got with this deduction you know before the episode actually airs so it's a good decision that they have shown this scenario failing as it not only builds up Rika and shows off what she can do and shows us as the audience that she's more than capable of interfering herself, um, which, personally speaking, was really cool. And it gave us a very cool effect of, like, staticness. When you ever look at an old TV or an old screen, it always, like, kind of have that weird static vibe. And giving that on Rika's sort of, like, face as it fades out, it had amazing animation, amazing sound effects with it, and it was a very kind of eerie, like, feeling. The vibe that Rika brought towards the end of this episode was almost like Salem from Ruby. If you're a fan of Ruby and you've seen Salem, you know she's kind of, she doesn't do a lot, but when she does like her weird dialogue type of speaking things, it brings this certain vibe and atmosphere that makes it seem very menacing and daunting. And that's exactly the vibe I got from Rika in this episode um, towards the end. Now there was one part in particular at the start of this episode that Kotoko basically states about being um, unreasonable with her reasoning in order to kind of convince people. This took me a couple of tries to watch because A, it was a little bit too fast and it was a little bit difficult to understand, especially going straight into it. This episode's pacing was very fast. Let's make that very clear. I didn't think they were going to have an intro and if they did have the intro, which they, they do, it should have been at the very beginning and then it should just ran straight along. Instead, they had this very quick explanation that was kind of confusing to start with if you didn't actually pay too much attention to it. So after watching it a couple of times, I guess they were just trying to create a small backdoor in people's minds to logically convince them that something unnatural can't really exist. That's what I kind of got from it. However, I believe that they should have had the intro, then this bit of dialogue, and carried on going as they did after the intro came in. I think that little break was kind of not necessary. So maybe they could play around with that a little bit in the future. But with only being two episodes left, I don't think that's going to happen. However, 
The last thing I want to talk about is Kuro himself. You poor man. You really should have kept your immortality a secret from your girlfriend. She is using you like a fiddle. That didn't make too much sense. Anyway, he is getting torn apart physically. Not only getting like, you know, torn apart, like ripped his body in half. He gets impaled by a tree, which he's not having the best of days looking at him from that image. Let, let's, let's be honest. However, seeing the shock on his face after seeing just how small and minute his favoured uh, future is for him and his team was a brilliant way to end off the episode. It added a bit more dramaticness. It added this like whole shocking vibe and kind of like gave it a bigger like a crash. Having a very successful scenario one, a pretty good, pretty more successful scenario two, then having scenario three get shot down by the person you're trying to beat, and then having the visual effects of the futures being presented and laid out in front of you just ripped away from you, and then um, shown to be very small and you know very hard to get, just gives us as the audience a wow factor, a dreaded vibe, a more hyped up suspense ending, that allows us to kind of look forward to future episodes. So overall, this episode um, was very interesting. It was very good. But it did lose me a little bit halfway through with the, the third scenario start off. But it does kind of clear itself up towards the end. But the sound effects and the voice acting were all great. Animation, like always, fantastic. And it's just basically the last scenario left with only two episodes to go. And yeah... I'm excited to see how this plays out and uh, seeing the painting crack little by little. Are we going to see it repaired before the end? Who knows? Or are we going to see it completely shatter at the end of episode 11? Let me know your thoughts on this episode down in the comment section below. Did you enjoy it? Did you find it confusing like I did? Or are you just really smart? Obviously you are. Let's, uh, let's be honest here. However, with all that being said, I hope you all have an amazing day. Like the video if you liked the video. Dislike it if you dislike it, I guess. Subscribe if you're new so you never miss a video from me. Until next time, hope you have an amazing day. Bye.